Hey there and welcome to another episode of Flickering Roofs. I guess I mean Sinu. Oh man, this this bug is getting worse and worse every time I open up the game. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do. I thought uh, I figured this out a couple episodes ago when I disable, you know, another mod that was controlling the time of the day, but apparently this is this is actually you know beyond anything that's specific to my computer apparently the vanilla game also flickers a lot so hopefully you know CO will get this patch at some point in the future my hopes are not super high but uh, you never know in any case uh, sorry for the delay in the episode uh, I really wanted to get this one out before in fact I did most of the recording for this episode uh, you know in time however this part right here the part where I actually record my commentary uh, took significantly longer because, well, I just didn't have time. But uh, in any case, here it is. And uh, as you can probably tell, we're going to be working on the airport, as I promised uh, in the previous episode. And we're only going to be focusing on the main terminal. And uh, this this was a long uh, project. Uh, I feel like this whole airport, to actually finish the airport, is going to take several episodes. So you've been asking, you know, you've been asking me to, to get the, the work on the airport uh, done so it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a lot of work but uh, it's gonna look amazing in fact just wait and see till the end of this episode the cinematics are gonna be so eye candy and there's uh, also a few surprises starting off by well remember how I mentioned that um, we're looking to do a bit of a collab with uh, B Schoolhouse and for this one and due to you know scheduling between him and me we couldn't you know figure it out but um, he was kind enough to design some custom assets for this episode so I'm not gonna spoil too much you just have to wait till the end of the episode uh, as I apply that uh, to this construction but um, they, they do look quite amazing so I want to thank him ahead of time for that and uh, we're starting things off by uh, you know putting down the main buildings in this case uh, we're using Rico buildings so these are not like actual plane terminals like functional plane terminals uh, for that uh, we have the plane stands that um, that I put down a couple episodes ago when we did the runway in case you haven't seen that I think that's episode 17 if I'm not mistaken you should go check that out um, and uh, yeah so all, all that I need for planes to spawn are those plane stands you can kind of see them there in the background uh, that line that kind of comes to towards uh, towards the uh, terminal on the ramp there's another one there's actually two of them and uh, those are the things that make these uh, airport functional even though that it's uh, getting a little bit tricky to get planes to spawn mostly because most of the population on this uh, project is very far away from uh, from this uh, from this airport island and uh, until we start developing you know the neighboring islands uh, there's not going to be that much demand for planes one thing i'm actually considering um and I, i've been doing very little testing on this i want to i want to actually sit down and do proper testing because it's kind of a hack but i was wondering if at this point i could potentially turn off all passenger services via a boat and just have you know basically funnel the entire passenger connections to the outside world uh, via the airport instead of uh, having boats because right now everyone takes uh, a boat from the edge of the map towards uh, the city to the many ports that we have actually and uh, I don't know just figuring out a way to to have only planes be the ones uh, carrying passengers and you know obviously we'll, we'll have to keep cargo uh, through ships because that's the only way you can get cargo into the city if you don't have rail or road connections so I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you posted about that uh, I think it's a little bit ambitious I don't think the game will necessarily like me doing that so there's definitely a ton of testing that will have to take place and um, right now I'm working on uh, one of the two parking lots that we will have and uh, actually uh, just a second ago you saw me starting putting down some bubble asphalt and sort of discarded that design I didn't quite like how it looked I think that uh, for that to you know to make sense I would need a larger parking space uh, since uh, I'm gonna be using you know usually use this uh, concrete road as the base road there's a high difference that it's hard to 
to get right uh, in such a tight space. So I decided to go, you know, straight up uh, concrete and uh, I tried so many different combinations. In fact, most of what you're looking at right now ended up scraping it again. Uh, specifically those uh, parking decals, they're a little bit thick. Uh, they're actually a quite a bit thick. And I decided to get rid of all of them and replace them with uh, the bike metal vanilla decal that is much thinner, uh, definitely lighter in terms of opacity and it just ended up look uh, much nicer. Um, and uh, over here, by the way, um, I'm using these uh, glass roofs that are pretty fantastic uh, because uh, it lets me sort of integrate these uh, Rico offices uh, into the parking lots and you know that road, that access road over there. And uh, I don't know, it just like makes it uh, all more integrated. There is indeed a, a bit of a roof that goes out of the building in the real building that I'm using as a reference. But uh, in this case, uh, I took some liberties with the design and um, obviously we're gonna be doing quite a few uh, tweaks and changes throughout this episode. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be repeating myself over and over again because, uh, and then deleting things, you know, that's my usual MO. Just do one thing, keep it for a while, not liking it and going back to a better option. One thing that uh, I was really trying to look is uh, now that, you, that I put down those uh, terminal signs over there, I was trying to find some sort of a uh, prop alphabet. Like imagine extruded letters uh, that you could just make your own sign. <laughs> I think that will be a cool prop idea. So whoever, you know, for any, uh, you know, asset creators that are watching this video, that could be an interesting thing and it shouldn't take a lot of time. Um, and in any case, one thing that I was, uh, that I ended up doing is uh, using uh, Vasmir, uh, Vasmir uh, runway signs for gates and you're gonna see me do that uh, in just a moment. Man, I'm getting way ahead of myself right now. Uh, to be honest, this is the first time I'm, I'm watching. Uh, this is mostly true for every time I record a commentary. This is the first time I'm actually reviewing all this footage. So since uh, I recorded all of this, like I think like three or four days ago, I can't, I don't remember exactly what I did. So I'm gonna, I'm basically improvising right now. And uh, yeah, we're setting up some uh, some uh, fences here for the perimeter of uh, of the airport to you know have a nice secure airport. You don't want an insecure airport. By the way, this airport is going to be pretty small overall. Uh, besides the main terminal, uh, in just a moment we're going to be working on the executive terminal that's just going to sit right next to it, as well as a fire station. And uh, this is, uh, by the way, pretty much the final look uh, for the parking lots. You see the, the lines separating the different parking spots are much thinner and lighter. And uh, obviously added the parking bumpers at the end of each one of these. It just adds that extra level of detail that I love having. <laughs> uh, and obviously it's not gonna just end up like this. Uh, we're definitely going to have uh, some concrete expansion joints that uh, will make it look a bit nicer. And uh, you saw me there scrape all those uh, drafts there on the on the ramp. I, I tried many different designs before settling on that one. So uh, trust me, it's uh, this is the best design I was able to come up with giving uh, the tools that I have at the moment at least. And now, um, you know, one, a big part of this episode too is uh, the design of, uh, well, the, the everything around the ramp and, uh, or the apron. Uh, to the left of the screen, there's gonna be uh, a few hangers, mostly for general aviation, which means, you know, smaller hangers. I'm trying to see if I can figure out a way to get larger hangers that would fit uh, some of the bigger planes that we'll have. Mind you, this airport never, I think uh, the biggest plane that lands here, by the way, in real life is an A320. So for the most part, this is this is an airport that is destined or designed mostly for smaller aircraft, uh, mostly domestic flights, even though they do have some international flights coming from Sri Lanka and, you know, nearby areas. But, uh, you know, it's worth pointing out in case you haven't gone, as, as I'm, I'm sure many of you haven't uh, gone onto Google Maps to see what this airport I'm using as a reference looks like. Let me tell you that this is indeed a pretty small airport and I'm trying to stay true to the original design. Uh, it doesn't have any jet bridges or anything like that. Um, 
and uh, I am indeed taking a few liberties uh, when it comes to design. So, for example, this whole area that I'm working on right now, the you know the the, the ramp or the apron here at uh, Gun Airport is is basically a giant concrete slab, and I didn't want to have just an empty concrete slab. Uh, I, I wanted to maybe have. Uh, some sort of detail there, but uh, without adding a crazy amount of features that are completely unrealistic. Uh, so I decided to, you know, go for a, a bit of a parking area or staging area. And that's literally what I'm working on right now. Uh, and obviously you're going to see me add a ton of Strictoster planes, Strictost Air planes, uh, just so that I can have the proper spacing, even though I'm not going to have you know, a huge area full of these planes because it just doesn't make sense. This is not a this is not a hub or anything like that. Uh, there were there are going to be a few parked planes um, at any given time, but uh, I, I wanted to keep things uh, pretty simple. And uh, right here, I decided to move one of these plane stands that I was talking about before. These, uh, you know, th these are the ones that make the airport functional. And uh, I just decided to label them, you know, as uh, as gate A and B, because that's, you know, that's as big as the airport is. And uh, just uh, using a combination of these uh, decals by Vasmir, they're so good. Uh, I, I can't stress enough how, how useful his whole airport uh, collection was, so huge shout out to him. Uh, he also retextured uh, one of the, uh, the, basically the Vore. Uh, down there uh, on the runway, you're probably gonna see that in the cinematics at the end, because uh, it had a, 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 it was one of the first uh, assets that he put together, and it had some some issues uh, with the texturing, but uh, he was kind enough to fix that for me. And uh, yeah, so as you can see here, I'm trying like the larger planes, even though these uh, won't necessarily land here, as I mentioned before. I think uh, this is the third or fourth take. I may have repeated myself a lot, by the way, so I do apologize for that, but uh, no time to, to go check it out. But on this side of the runway, uh, as you can see, I'm putting down some of the general aviation uh, plane stands, I guess. And this is also where the executive terminal will take place. But uh, I guess now I'm switching to adding some lights and I'll come back to lights uh, in the future to uh, there's going to be multiple stages of me adding lights. Um, I, you know, at first I started putting down this like stadium lights that uh, I think work great, uh, but um, there were a, there were a little bit too much, so I ended up settling for a, a different combination of uh, stadium lights and uh, you know the airport lights that we're used to putting down on other airports, I guess. But of course. As always, I'm getting ahead of myself, and all of that's gonna make uh, a little bit more sense once I actually, you know, go do it. In the meantime, um, putting down some of these uh, concrete expansion joints pretty much throughout, uh, well, all of the concrete surfaces, to be honest, uh, even on, on the sidewalks and on the parking lots uh, that uh, will probably take place uh, at some point after this, <laughs> this segment, but, you know, getting these, um, these uh, concrete expansion joints really makes it look like a real, uh, like a real airport. Seriously, it's it's such a simple thing, and uh, as you can see, the edges. Uh, since I I couldn't quite get uh, everything to align right up to the edge perfectly, because there's obviously tons of imperfections and you know differences in sizes. I decided to sort of complement these uh, already pre-made panels. Uh, I think these are by Ronix. Uh, with some of the concrete expansion joints that are probably my favorite asset right now. Uh, those are by Beard Monkey. I specifically requested them a while back and they like made my life so much easier. So also a huge shout out to him for, for getting those done. And uh, oh, okay, so this is interesting. So what you see me do here is uh, add some wear and tear to the uh, area immediately around uh, these uh, you know, plane stands. Uh, I wanted to, you know, make it a little bit rougher there and not, obviously, I, I didn't want to have like huge oil stands and, and things like that. So I decided to just use that, uh, I don't know what, what it's called. I think it's called the stain decal or something like that. That makes it look uh, a little bit rough. And I think it came out great overlapping uh, with each other, uh, you know, overlapping, um, you know, that decal mostly a couple times. 
can English today. I do apologize for that, but uh, I think that, you know, it's pretty clear what I'm trying to say. Uh, in any case, oh, we have a plane landing. Oh yeah, I decided to leave this clip here so you can see the actual functionality of the runway and how everything looks. And it takes off and I think I'm actually gonna move the camera. There you go. Uh, I had to put down some some big buildings. Uh, you saw them just a second ago there so that uh, we can get some traffic in here. Hopefully by the time I'm done and I get rid of all those, uh, you know, uh, demand inducing buildings, uh, we'll get some real traffic. But at least we know the the, the airplane is, uh, sorry, the, the airport works. So, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Now, surrounding the area of the main terminal, which is uh, what I'm working on right now, we have the fire station that I just put down and um, also setting the stage for this uh, executive terminal that is going to take place in just a moment. And then we also have this uh, warehouse that uh, I don't know what the purpose of this warehouse is, but it's adjacent to a future dock that we're going to have. In fact, uh, you're gonna see at the end of the of the episode during the cinematics that there's gonna be some like security barriers leading into the water because there's a couple projects that I'm planning for that area that obviously I'm not gonna be working on right now. In fact, these are projects that will probably take a while to be you know completed. Specifically, this road and that leads into the ocean is gonna be a key component in future episodes. But for now, we're just gonna detail around it. Uh, obviously, it's gonna look amazing because why wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, and uh, this is um, this is my attempt at an executive terminal. I tried so many different buildings until I settled with this uh, generic-looking uh, vanilla building. Actually, as you can see, I tried these uh, Rico offices from King Leno, but I ended up deciding that uh, this is the building that I wanted, obviously getting rid of all the billboards with um, Prop It Up. And uh, I found two copies basically of this building that uh, I'm clipping amongst each other. And uh, obviously I get the flickering textures as you put them together. If you ever have this problem, by the way, when you like clip two buildings and they're at the exact same height uh, and then the, you know, the roof textures start fighting, uh, just flicker a lot. Uh, one thing you can do, which is something that I do quite often, even on this terminals, you probably didn't even notice I did that. But uh, if you just grab one of those buildings and, you know, obviously with move it, you page them down. Uh, the, there will be a different heights, which means uh, the planes won't be fighting uh, for you know visibility in the Z axis. That's uh, that's what's called Z fighting, and uh, you know the, the the buildings will look as if they are at the same uh, level. However, you won't have that uh, that weird uh, little glitch there, and uh, you know that uh, segment you know shared segment in the roof. You can see nothing is happening. It just looks uh, great. And uh, I highly recommend you try that out because it's pretty useful. Uh, unfortunately, in cases like, for example, these uh, uh, curves with the grass, uh, there's a ton of sea fighting there. Uh, it's not uh, something I can fix, unfortunately, because you can bring those uh, curves down, or at least I don't know how to. I tried uh, many different things and I couldn't uh, figure that out. Uh, another thing that I'm using a lot actually is that I haven't talked about yet is uh, the, I think actually, you know what? I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, but uh, King Lena released some uh, cement uh, sidewalks that are great too. And I've been using them around the fire station. So pay attention next time I actually show the fire station on, on the screen. Uh, you can see, you know, the little uh, sidewalk edges pretty much around it. And unfortunately that asset also doesn't have the uh, ability to sync them. So it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, there's some sea fighting. So I try to be clever in the way I organize uh, those assets and orient them so that, uh, you know, at least the sea fighting is not so noticeable. Now over here, as you can see, I'm extending this, uh, this ramp a little bit closer to the edge of the perimeter to the fence here and uh, instead of adding cones around uh, those uh, stadium lights as, as we usually do uh, with with you know every time I do something with flux so <laughs> I guess I am now like putting cones next to everything but I decided to give it a different uh, uh, I guess a different approach and I put down some like yellow decals and obviously um, a segment 
of uh, just a regular concrete decal to sort of uh, make it look as if, uh, you know, it's just painted on the floor, as many elements are on, on runways for the most part. And this uh, access road that you see me uh, you know, add decals there. I wanted to really make it apparent that uh, there's definitely more traffic on that area of the runway, or sorry, of the ramp, than uh, the rest of the airport. So obviously there's a lot more wear and tear on that one segment. And, uh, you know, it couldn't help uh, go crazy with uh, some of these props by Vesmer. These, uh, you know, the, the luggage carts and uh, the little tow trucks and the ladders and, uh, well, just all sorts of uh, airport-related vehicles. Uh, by the way, I know I'm going to get comments about this. I, I've gotten comments before. Uh, last time I did an airport, I think it was in Cedar Valley. Uh, I'm, I'm using the Netherlands police vans as airport security because they look like airport security. I'm sorry, but uh, they're perfect for that. So I decided to add a few of those, uh, even though they're not quite airport security. They, they do look like that. And uh, they really fit the theme of, you know, like a bright yellow. That bright yellow really says to me airport security. So that's what uh, I decided that uh, that was going to be the case. And uh, over here, going back to this uh, general aviation uh, area, uh, we have a variety of planes. I got uh, a whole bunch of Cessnas. Um, I think that's a Beechcraft too. I don't know the exact names of these of some of these planes, but they do. Uh, I just try to spread them around. And this is actually a thing that exists in the real airport, by the way. That that whole area on the corner is dedicated to smaller uh, planes. Uh, there's usually not that many planes, from what I can see in the satellite imagery. Uh, but you know, this is this is still a a game right and I'm obviously trying to create a scene so you know I, I sometimes I, I tend to overdo things on purpose and that was uh, one of these uh, situations I guess um, man these star marks really really make everything look much more iterated and realistic I'm gonna be adding a lot of these tire marks and they're great for transitioning you know the purple asphalt and the regular concrete too so you should definitely try that out uh, obviously adding a few uh you know pedestrian crossings and before everyone asks i created a node in between those uh you know pedestrian crossings and limited the speed to 10 kilometers an hour so that cars will indeed slow down when you know as they go across that uh that crossing i i, I had many of those uh, crossings throughout this uh, whole project and i always get this the same comment in the in the description of my video saying hey you need to like make cars slow down because they're going you know 80 kilometers an hour on speed bumps so i did there you go you're very welcome and uh, what else I'm working on? Oh yeah, so I'm gonna be spending a long time adding uh, those concrete expansion joints pretty much everywhere. Uh, most of the roads around the airport are going to be uh, concrete. In fact, to, well, to the left of the screen right now, well, not right now, but like to the area left of the screen, uh, there's gonna be a huge build, which is a bit of a oil, storage area i mean that's where the jet fuel i think it's stored but also i think it's where old tankers unload their cargo that uh, is later used in the couple gas stations that are spread throughout uh the project so that thing in and of itself is going to be uh you know a pretty big project there's going to be uh, several you know big oil tanks but, you know, that's probably a topic for another episode. These are the lights that I was talking to you about uh, just a moment ago. These, like, highway lights, I think they're called, too. I don't know. I, I, I searched for airport and those showed up. But, I, but I've used them before for, you know, freeway interchanges. Uh, obviously not on this project, but uh, in general. Uh, these also are the sidewalks that I was telling you about. Uh, these, uh, th they're so good. I wish though that, uh, I, I th hopefully King Lynn is watching this. I don't know if he will take note of this, but I always search for cement. Uh, sorry, I have to search for cement uh, and not sidewalk. My first, uh, the asset is, is called cement sidewalk, but I tend to search for sidewalk and I never find them because they're not tagged. Uh, properly so mr kinlan if you're watching if you want to help out a little bit just maybe change the 
maybe change the uh, the name of the asset so that it's searchable by sidewalk and not just cement. Because <laughs> I, I remember now, but uh, if I leave the game for a while and then come back, I'll definitely not going to remember. And uh, over here, uh, I'm working on the only rental car place that this airport's going to have. It's a little bit, you know, away from the main terminal. Not so much that you can't walk towards it. And it's uh, an Europa car. Uh, obviously, these are the only assets, uh, the only, I guess, the only kit that I had available when I was uh, working on this episode. Uh, I just have that uh, sign up there. Uh, and there's actually uh, like three or four signs. Uh, there's one that's huge that I decided not to include, but uh, with the smaller signs, uh, you're going to see me do some custom signs, I guess. I keep saying the word sign, so I do apologize for that. But uh, One thing, one issue that I had with this, uh, with this building, by the way, that's just a vanilla building that I stripped down from all the props. Uh, and uh, one of the issues that I had was actually, you know, those two little bushes that are on the side, those come built in with the uh, building. Unfortunately, Prop It Up doesn't allow you to get rid of all of the trees, which is very unfortunate, because if it were for me, I would get rid of everything. Uh, I, I would love a mod that just strips every single prop from every building, or at least vegetation, uh, or decals even. Like, uh, there's so many great buildings or great assets that just have a parking space that makes no sense. I know we talked about this before in the Arrowhead days. Uh, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but man, there's there's so many opportunities to use some great assets that just have a terribly placed parking lot that sure I can cover with plumpable asphalt, but sometimes that that doesn't work, and uh, you know I just end up not using them and uh, having to resource to something else and you know spend more time. But it could have been much much easier if that was the case. In any case, I keep changing uh, the subject. This building, those two bushes uh, were, the, the, the basically the, that building has two ugly vanilla trees. And uh, when I replaced the props for this one, it worked fine. In fact, when I plopped the building for the first time, it was already, uh, it already included those bushes. So I think I might have included somewhere else in the city and, you know, done the treatment of removing the vanilla trees. However, after after I reloaded the save at some point, those uh, the original vanilla trees came back. And I don't know why or how, uh, even though I reset the, you know, prop it up and, and re try to replace the trees, it just didn't quite work. So that was very unfortunate. Uh, another thing that I'm doing here, by the way, and I've done this before, is uh, do these... Uh, dashed uh, curve paints that are they're they seem to be pretty popular in uh, in Asia for the most part uh, which is where we are right now in case you haven't noticed um, so I'm, I've just decided to add a few of these uh, dashed curves specifically around the areas uh, where you shouldn't basically park at all <laughs> even though that's uh, a two it's a one-way parking street uh, so cars will indeed park over there, but um, I just thought that was an extra, you know, level of detail just to add those uh, curved, uh, painted curves, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, over here, just uh, marking the different entrances to the different gates. And um, as I was mentioning before, I think, uh, I was using these uh, gate <laughs> signs uh, uh, runway signs uh, for, for that uh, to mark the entrances of the gates, uh, which actually look great and I recommend you do so. Also, if you really want to get close, I don't know if you noticed that, and I did this in the previous episode, I don't know if I talked about it because I, I had it on my notes to talk about it because it's a nice technique. Even if you don't do YouTube videos or anything like that, you should get cinematic camera extended because it will allow you to do just that. If you change the FOB to like 20, uh, which is the lowest setting possible, you can use uh, the camera controls to actually zoom in like really, really close and, and get a ton, ton of detail. So this is similar. Uh, I'm going to be using that technique uh, in just a moment. And oh, by the way, <laughs> I reintroduced this uh, little camera trick <laughs> that I used uh, in the Cedar Valley days where I'm like setting up some keyframes and like 
editing things as I am uh, as a camera rotates, which is kind of a, a cool <laughs> a cool little trick. I'm gonna try to do that more often. It it works best when you're doing like nature scenes, not so much when you need precision, because like the camera is actually moving, and I need to like uh, compensate with my uh, mouse cursor. You're gonna see it one more time in this episode, I think. But I thought it was a, a clever uh, way to to entertain you. So I hopefully hopefully you appreciate the time and effort into <laughs> into animating the cameras. Oh man, uh, I I spent so much time like trying out different things for this uh, whole uh, garden. Oh, there you go. That's uh, it's a little bit faster. I spent so much time trying to come up with the cool designs for this uh, park area in front of the, you know, front of the terminal. I decided to go for something actually pretty simple. Uh, just uh, a layer of grass, some palm trees. And then on the areas that uh, we have a bit of a larger footprint, I decided to do clusters of ferns and, and bushes and things. Not that one specifically, because I didn't like that one, but I uh, ended up, uh, you know, just putting a hedge of little bushes all around uh, these areas. And then in the middle, like for example, this big triangle here, this is the technique that I was talking about, by the way. Um, you know, just keep it simple. And then on the larger areas, just put a little bit more foliage that uh, I thought looked nicer. Uh, adding uh, the final touches to the parking lots. By the way, I don't know, I, I, I think they look great this way, uh, to be honest, just uh, with the concrete expansion joints. Obviously having a manholes here and there uh, makes it look a little bit uh, nicer. I was uh, thinking of adding a few more, you know, wear decals on the, on the parking lots, but I, th I thought that was a little bit overkill, so I just decided not to do it. And uh, obviously I'm going to be surrounding the areas around the airport or the main terminal with a lot of trees. As you can see uh, from from that cluster of trees that I was using. And, you know, the, the base of the trees is usually something that I really, that really bugs me for the most part. Because when you look at it from, you know, from first person, which is not something that I tend to do mostly because of how bad the frame rate is. Um, but they do... If the trees are just sitting there on the grass, they don't look great. So I decided to just uh, use a surface painter and create, you know, like usually shaded areas don't have a ton of grass growing in between them. So, you know, using that surface painter there to like do some little touches on, on the trees and the base of the trees uh, together with some dirt decals, it really makes it look a million times better. And I recommend you doing that too, if you, especially if you tend to look at your belts from first person. Obviously, uh, this whole back area, it's somewhat restricted. That's why we have so many fence gates that separate the different sections. And uh, the fact that I'm switching into details and I'm cutting clips so short means that we're actually pretty close to the end of the episode. Now, before I go, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's been uh, supporting the channel, specifically those who have been into the merch store and got themselves a cool t-shirt or phone case or stickers. Uh, that really means a lot to me. It really does help a lot uh, in, in terms of, you know, supporting the channel. I tend to reinvest most of uh, what I make from the channel and, you know, hopefully I'm able to entertain you better. So in case you haven't seen that yet, uh, you can go ahead to uh, strictoster.com slash store and you can browse different designs. Uh, again, everything uh, that you buy there, I get a cut and uh, that really helps maintain the channel. Now, before I go and after my shameless self-promotion, I do want to point out this uh, magnificent asset that Beast Cool House and put together for this series which is the Flight Sinu uh, turboprop. I, um, I've i been, uh, I mean, he also put together a Strutos Air version of this uh, plane, but uh, I mean, I couldn't be happier with how it looks. This will be the main airline serving the this map, I guess. Uh, so a huge shout out to Thank. Thank you so much. And hopefully we can uh, figure out uh, a way so that you can be a guest episode in the near future. But uh, like I said, that does it for this one. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and haven't already, I want to encourage you to go subscribe. That way you're notified immediately after one of these videos come out. In the description, you're going to find all of the various links to my social media accounts as well as the full playlist in case you might have missed an episode. But that's, uh, that's it for now. 
I want to thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next one.